Perspective is something you can't escape if you want to draw and paint man-made objects. There are a few basic rules, and once you get the hang of these rules it all becomes fairly simple. The first thing to understand is the horizon line, or eye level line. It is simply a horizontal line that passes through everything at the height of your eyes above the ground. The effect of perspective is most noticeable on all horizontal lines. All these lines are horizontal. If you place the spirit level on them, they would all be level. The effect of perspective makes these lines appear to converge on points called vanishing points. The vanishing points for these horizontal lines will always be somewhere on the eye level line. There are three major influences on the position of the vanishing points along the horizon line. These are our position around the object, our height above or below the object, and our distance from the object. Watch what happens to the vanishing points as we move around this building. The point on the right moves away from the building, while the point on the left moves in closer. The second factor influencing the position of the vanishing points is our elevation or our height above or below the object. If we sit on the ground and look at the building, our eye level is not much higher than the floor, and it tends to give a fisheye effect, with very low vanishing points. If we were to climb up a tower and look down on the building, our eye level moves up above the building. So both vanishing points will be above the building and all horizontal lines will appear to slope up to these vanishing points. The third thing influencing the position of the vanishing points is our distance from the building. Watch what happens to the vanishing points as we walk away from the building. Both vanishing points move further away from the building until the effect of perspective is almost unnoticeable. So how do we find the eye level line and vanishing points when we are looking at a building or a photograph of a building? The trick is to look for the clues. We only need two receding lines on a wall to pinpoint the horizon line and vanishing point. The buildings down this laneway all have slightly different vanishing points because of the curve in the laneway. They'll all be on the same eye level line and are easy to find simply by following receding lines on each building. A great way to understand how perspective works is to draw some simple little boxes and vary the position of the eye level or horizon line and the vanishing points. We'll start with a simple little box with the eye level line running through it. Next we will draw a box from underneath. Our horizon line and vanishing points will be below the box this time. This time looking down on the box. Let's shift the boxes over and cluster a few together. This is the basic framework to most building structures. It's well worthwhile practicing these little boxes. Once you feel comfortable with them, seemingly complex structures become much easier to draw. As well as receding lines or linear perspective, we can use what is known as aerial perspective to show depth in our paintings. As objects move into the distance, they undergo certain changes. Colours become cooler and less intense. The tonal range becomes compressed, so the darks will appear lighter and highlights won't look as light. Detail diminishes and edges become blurred and softer. Now let's get back to our little building where we will combine aerial and linear perspective. 
First, let's go through the process of drawing the building. We will start with the solid mass of the building, ignoring the verandas. And our first line is the closest vertical corner. Lines from the top and bottom of this corner back to our vanishing points will allow us to block in the solid mass of the building. A vertical line through the intersecting diagonals in the end wall will give us a midpoint from which we can run a line back to our vanishing point to draw the ridge of the roof. It's a simple matter then to draw in the roof and extend an overhang for the eave. To locate our veranda posts we can come from our vanishing points through the two bottom corners of the building. Sit the veranda posts on these lines and draw in the angle for the veranda roof. We can now draw lines from our vanishing points back through the top and bottom of these posts to locate the front corner of the veranda. This gives us enough information to block in the veranda. We can then insert all the posts and details. Some windows and doors and that's it. Now let's draw it on our board or paper. I'll paint this with watercolour but you can use whatever medium you like. When the vanishing points are off the paper, you might like to use a ruler and a couple of pins banged into your drawing board to help with the construction lines. Ultimately though, try drawing without a ruler. Once you gain confidence with perspective, you won't even need to put in the vanishing points. see the cool soft distance and sharp warm foreground quickly establish depth in the painting. Making the red on this distant roof slightly cooler and not quite as dark pushes it off into the distance. I'm using a number two rigger brush here to put some fine detailed lines into the centre of interest. Put as much detail as you can into this close up area and remember not to overwork the detail as you move back into the painting. Try and keep as much contrast between light and dark up in the foreground area of your painting. As you get back into the distance, remember to keep those darks slightly lighter than the darks in the foreground. A light diagonal band through the sky will help direct attention back to the centre of interest. A few sharp lines with some white gouache and the suggestion of figures in the centre of interest here will hold attention in this area. Warm colours, strong tonal contrast, and detail in the foreground bring it right up close, while the cool soft simplicity at the end of the road push it back into the distance. 
Linear and aerial perspective go hand in hand in creating depth in a painting. It is well worth the time and effort involved in understanding both these skills. I hope this 10 minute demonstration has helped you on your way to mastering these techniques.